everyone, as promised a while ago, when I was doing these Terabeta mixing, uh, color mixing um, exercise, I promised to do a little botanical using some of these colors. And so today I feel inspired to do the rapeseed illustration. So here in UK, um, it's time for the rapeseed fields um, to be in like full bloom. And it's really, really beautiful when you're driving through the countryside. The big, huge fields are covered in these luminous yellow, kind of chartreuse almost colored um, flowers. They're actually yellow, very vibrant and bright yellow. But the reason I say chartreuse is because when we went on a hike in uh, Wales, there was a certain time of the day, like towards the sunset, when the sun hit the field and we were like on top of the hill and the the field looked really <laughs> like chartreuse, glowing, yellowy, kind of greeny colour. It was stunning. So I felt inspired today and I want to kind of use that chartreuse mix that we did up here together with the um, cobalt turquoise and aquarius brown so i've got these two colors ready here these are by roman schmal and also for my chartreuse base i will use the lemon yellow by schminke and to begin with i'll just do the drawing uh, I'll do a close-up because they're very dainty, small flowers. My ink of choice today will be Sketch Ink in the color Emma. And it's by Rora and Klingner. And look at this cool illustration. So it's a green ink. And I think it will be great for today's purpose. I don't remember whether it's water-soluble or not. In fact, I should actually give it a nice bit of a shake in the bottle just in case it's settled. The bottle itself is dark so unfortunately can't see through it. Okay it's a bit for me because I shook it up quite a bit. So let's start. I'll start with the tops. So if that happens, it'd be good to have a little tissue next to you so you can just pick up the big blob of the ink. Basically, I'm not following any rule here. Um, it's a four petal flower, and I just sort of loosely create these uh, shapes that resemble these flowers. 
and basically it's a bit of a pyramid so I need to start moving out slightly maybe adding another flower up here um, it's kind of that shape of the flower stem or the blossom so these become a bit longer these lines or the bits that have the flower attached to the main stalk and this bit the actual stalk it also is becoming thicker so I'm just going to actually to go ahead and draw it out so just to give myself a bit more of a shape here and um, maybe also make the flowers slightly bigger as they get to the bottom and also try to <clears throat> overlap them slightly that always creates interest in botanical art Technically they're not connected, the flowers. The flowers come straight off the stem. But, you know, if you really want to add a flower here or there to create a structure and you haven't done that, you can, you can do it. Just be inspired by the actual image but it doesn't have to be exact. Um, and to finish, I'm just going to go and create one more here. And feel like another one up here. Just like that. And that's it. I'll leave it at that. Always with glass dip pans, submerge them in a bit of water, just how you would treat a brush, watercolor brush, and then just wipe them dry. Over time, you'll see a bit of a buildup in ink, which you can do a bit more of a deeper cleanse. Okay, so let's remind ourselves whether these are, this is a water soluble ink. No, it actually isn't. All right, that's good. Okay, so what I actually will do is I will color in or fill in the stem in this ink because we already have some of it right here at the top. And if I would add watercolour on top, I think it would just be quite obvious. So I just want to connect this area. Once it dries, it leaves a line, so there we go. Okay, now, next step, let's mix up that lovely chartreuse again. So if memory serves correctly, I actually used up a lot more of the lemon yellow than I first thought I would. And uh, yeah, so it took quite a bit of this color. So let's start with the Bubble Turquoise by Roman Schmal.
and then quite a bit of this lemon yellow into this and let's just give this a go here a little try that's a nice color really nice color so I want to see now what happens if I start adding more and more water how it will change the color okay so far so good so let's go into this lovely chartreuse that we just mixed up so I'm going to start with these uh, with the top of the illustration because they are still closed up um, buds and so they have a little bit more green to them and as we navigate towards the center of the flower the more yellow they become so I'm just going to do that and I'm hoping to see some lovely granulation in this mix because this is a good example when you're creating an illustrative style uh, you, you want something interesting you don't want it to look flat and you know it doesn't have to have a botanical representation of the color so it doesn't have to be realistic as it is in actual life um, in actual fact and so this is where your freedom comes as an artist you can create some pretty interesting mixes to make your illustration stand out so I'm just picking up certain areas from the mix and you can see hopefully the color separation that's happening so it was very simple to mix up this color, three colors, and off you go. You could add a tiny bit more of the um, cobalt turquoise, but it sort of starts leaning again a bit more towards green. So if that's too green for you, then add more lemon yellow to warm it up but I'm enjoying this sort of slight variation here and there even some areas with more um, Aquarius brown in there So just like that and then I think I would mix up a slightly greener version like so and go in so these three colors would give you some lovely green mixes I'm just going over that ink here So here I've got this version, so you can see it's more kind of olivey, so if I add a bit more of the cobalt turquoise I get this green, if I add a bit more of the, maybe that was a bit touch, a touch too much it was, <laughs> uh, the, yeah that's too warm. Aquarius brown, so let's add a bit more water. So here we go. That's another variation, and then of course, into that, more lemon yellow. So we get this lovely zingy color, and let's add more water and say a little bit more.
of both of the colors. So I'm just showing you a nice variation you can mix yourself. And then it said more of the lemon yellow. That will be a lovely green, very juicy green. Okay, I think that gives you a good understanding of all the greens you can mix. And here is our illustration. I think best thing to do is to leave it dry completely because I can't see the full effect of the granulation coming through yet. So I'll do that. As I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm not quite sure I like this ink. Um, it's something to do with its flatness. When it dries, it's um, it doesn't have an interest for me personally. Um, I don't use it very often for that reason. I felt that when I was buying it, I was hoping for a more sub green type of color, so more lumin luminosity to it, um, which I find that it sort of dries quite dull. So I'm not loving it too much, and I decided to try these two other colors I have by the Diamine, which are water soluble ink, um, and they will move into watercolor very nicely. So the color I have here is sepia and steel blue, which is a beautiful turquoise. So let's try doing the same thing. So I'm going to go into this lovely mix here and just add it in some areas. And quite often what will happen is that this ink is picked up by the watercolor and it moves beautifully into it creating another dimension of the color and interest and I really like that look. Sometimes you lose a bit of detail, sometimes you still keep a little bit of that detail. It's a really lovely way of drawing and illustrating. I prefer it personally. And um, I can already see a lot more interesting things happening here. I'll give you a close-up a bit later. Now, let's try it with this turquoise. I've never actually tried it and since this is a green color, I wonder if it will kind of work nicely. It's pulling out, obviously, the uh, Taylor blue in here, and I think it looks interesting. Okay, so... Let's have a look. So we have three different variations of um, inks and colors and textures in the sense that some of them are water soluble. And then the permanent ink, which doesn't move together. So it depends what sort of style you are after. And here are the lovely green mixes that I created using those three colors. And hopefully you can see some of the lovely separations, mostly in these and this one. The more water there is, the less you can see the pigments, but hopefully you can pick out some of those right here. And then up in here as well, or down here rather. 
so I hope you enjoy this very loose um, illustration. Usually I draw quite carefully and minimally so you know they're, they're more kind of modern um, illustrations. Yet yeah, this one was very sketchy and free-handed and um, it's, it's a good way to try and do uh, those type of sketches once in a while as well. It just kind of loosens up your wrist um, and that's it really. So I hope you had fun. I hope it inspired you to uh, mix some of your greens, chartreuse greens maybe, uh, or muted chartreuse greens or different uh, variations of chartreuse greens or just in general greens, why not? So that's it for today and thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.